we also had an app called Mindy, M-I-N-D-I-E. And if you look it up, Mindy video app, it was TikTok. It was literally musically cloned Mindy app and uh, Mindy uh, musically became TikTok. But we had the original TikTok. <laughs> Your shirt's reflecting too much. <laughs> Mike, there's a lot of jewels. There's a lot of jewels on the shirt. Dude, you look like a beanie baby. I'm like a, a bedazzled <laughs> beanie baby. I don't know if you've noticed And you this. going like this just signals that you are a beanie baby. I'm a hype beast. I'm the next Shroud. Has Have you guys not seen my gaming? Are you too old to be a hype beast? I'll, are I'll you too it. old to be a gamer? I think I'm too old to be alive. <laughs> I don't think that matters. Welcome dude. back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I got a stat. 99% of people who watch these podcasts are actually not subscribed. Is this dude so, still fucking talking? Jeff. Wait, Jeff, yeah, yeah, Jeff <laughs> what are you managing besides us having a headache? <laughs> so, uh, Dan, Dan, me, everything give, comes out of his mouth is, is kids. Give me an Advil. I'm joking. Everyone who watches the podcast is subscribed. But if you're not, for some reason, subscribe, please hit that button for us. Coming up on 3 million. What? No, what? Yeah, sort of. How, how early are you saying that? So early. What is it? How many? I'm a capper. How many do <laughs> like, I have? Like 400,000 away. I'm a cap. <laughs> but, 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 but as an optimist and as someone who sees that bright future, I, it's, it's in, within reach. It's I never thought it was possible. Bro, come on. Three million subscribers on a, on a podcast channel. That's really cool. And we're going to be doing a, a set renovation soon. It's time. We're going to get, we're going to change your profile picture. We see the comments. All right. I'm Dude, gonna change your profile picture. We look like we're in the inside of a McDonald's bouncy house. This this or SpongeBob's butt. Yeah, the studio needs a revamp. It was cool at first. There's a lot of Dan, hit the lights. We have a lot of like cool effects. And are, we, can, are we still gonna have cool things like that? Yeah, but it's just gonna be uh if you're in the Maverick Club, you got a little sneak peek of what that looks like. I'm excited. I'm excited. What else, I, guys? I mean, when you see True Jordy's podcast, it just makes you think like this could be so much more earth toned. <laughs> Yes, wooden. This, it's kind of what we're doing. Oh, speaking of that, speaking you know of that, I got some comments on the last episode. Nice. Uh, you, keep leaving comments if, if there's some good ones. Yeah, we'll touch on them. Here we are. Got some best comments on the last episode oh, uh, regarding. Remember my uh, my hobby of woodworking that I thought about doing. Yeah, Check yeah. it out. Yeah, Ryan Faulkner says, "Log and Paul woodworking channel coming soon." That's I. I Great. Log, Log and Paul. Log and Paul. Bet. Riley Lopez eight, says, eight out of 10. honestly, would love to see a series called Logan Works on His Wood. That That's on Pornhub. These are, these are, that is that on would Pornhub. be on Pornhub, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Would it be in the morning? <laughs> nice. Nice, George. Thank you. Christoph Moraes says, what about as a hobby, Logan, you start posting some vlogs on your oh. channel? Red lights? Okay. Red lights? Yeah. She ain't wrong. We had this conversation last night, dude. If if you just you I walked away without even talking about it, Mike said. Mike said, if you're incapable of creating one video a week, you're a fucking loser. You've been gifted the and he he has a valid semi valid excuse, but you've been gifted. This, he doesn't. Jeff shaking his head. No, you've been gifted this. But he didn't do anything. I'm gonna say gifted. You've been gifted this platform of 20 million plus subscribers. <laughs> it was just given to him. He did absolutely fucking nothing to earn it. <laughs> Besides, yeah, you can't create. You can't give the people a a four to six minute piece of content and update on your daily, man, you sit your fat ass down and you point a camera at yourself and you talk to the camera. I hey. won't put out shit content. I won't. So I won't we talked it. about this because, cause I, now I've almost a month deep without putting yeah, a piece out yeah. too, because I've been, you know, in my hat doing some other stuff or whatever. You won't put out content unless it's fucking grade A quality content, grade A quality content, four minutes of grade A quality content that you see on YouTube could take three hours of of planning, shooting. Oh, what? Three, three hours? hours? Three I, days? I said three days. No, you didn't. Yes, he I said, did. He did. He did. I said three days. He did. You can rewind Thank and watch. You. Thank you. Thank you. You did the same thing on the Sadhguru podcast. Yeah, you got to stop putting words in Mike's mouth. He's so confused. Georgia, <laughs> we, we came to the conclusion that the impulsive audience has no idea. We're, we're sarcastic about so everything. So sarcastic. Everything. We're fucking assholes. I just feel like, and I, and I told you guys about this. Before, when the cameras are off, you guys are very mean to me. No, stop, and stop. Don't, don't, do don't do this. Don't do it. Don't do They're going to believe you. I don't even want to talk. I don't want to open up on this podcast anymore. I'm nervous. <laughs> stop, Georgie. Guys, let's bring out our guest. Let's bring out someone with an actual brand. He is the co-founder and CEO of Shot Studios. He was instrumental in the blossoming stages of Bieber's career. Justin Bieber, that is. He manages the career of Lele Ponce, Hannah Stocking, Anwar Jabari, and, uh, Jabawi, and of course, his newest client, Jake Paul, my brother, he's a multimedia genius who's normally behind the scenes here today to share his secrets. Please welcome John Shahidi. <laughs> At Johnny. 
John, 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 John. Here we go. Here we go. John. Let me, let me. No, no, no. You let me. Okay. I was going to leave you with an easy Don't leave me in with any questions. Okay. So John, how's your day going? Stop. I'm going to lead in with a statement. The wardrobe today. I got to ask, uh, what's good? What's good with the wardrobe? Just wanted to look proper. You look like Fred from Scooby Doo. Wow. Holy that, shit. That, that, it's the first thing I. Halloween. It's the first thing I. I me too. I was yeah. going to be Fred. Yeah. Instead, I was a Reese's Butter you, you, you do look good. You look proper. I've just Thank never you. seen the collar. Yeah, this the is, peeking this is a, from the shirt. You know, this is a uh, business podcast. I listen to it Impulsive is. to Learn. So I came here to teach a little bit too. We would love to learn things from you, Johnny. You have a, mm. you've been you've been doing this for so long. I've known you for seven years plus mm -hmm. for too long. At first, you wouldn't even give me the time of day, and now we're best friends. No, I you, you, you pitched me on uh, airplane mode seven years ago. Did you say how do you feel good about <laughs> you feel good about that past now or what? Do you, do you wish you got involved in that that stunning project? No, the Oscar idea was winner? good. Everyone starts. That was his first movie. <laughs> You know what I mean? And you learn. Next movie's gonna be better. Do you and have to movie. do you have to make shitty things in order to make good things eventually? I don't know if airplane mode was shitty. What are you talking about? It was about? an experiment. It was an ex a two and a half million dollar experiment. You know? I well, like that, that, that was I mean, that was your inexperience. You know what they say uh you know, um inexperience turns into bad decisions and bad decisions turn into experience. Can Is you, that what they say? Inexperience turns into bad decisions and bad, and bad decisions, decisions turn into experience. Okay. So that's what I'm saying because I've, I've been watching a lot of, uh, a lot of programming recently and a lot of these things are so good. And I feel like the creators, the directors, the writers are, have just a, a track record of unparalleled success. And for me, it's not like that. Like I've fucked up a lot and that's how I learned. And that's how I like got good or at least like semi good to a place where I'm, I'm comfortable with putting out stuff that I believe in. But have you had a, an immense amount of setbacks that equate to your success? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't even know where to start. You know, like there's, I mean, we met because, you know, uh, I had an app that had over eight and a half million users, you know, and raised like $15 million in shots. App. Yeah. The shots app. shots app. Right. And like, then, you know, where is that now? So, you know what I mean? Like, but you still learn, you know what I mean? It's not going to stop me from making my next app idea. Mm. You know, I think we learn, um, whether it's like what we're co content we're creating, what apps we're making, whatever it is, even merch, you know, like, you know, you get better and better and better with merch, um, different businesses, you know, I'm sure version one of Maverick Club is going to be a lot different than version 10 of Maverick Club. Yeah. So they tell me I'm pushing my clothes. Can you also, I'm soft can you also put that on just for a hot second? Can you pull wow. Fred up again, please? Or just, just hold it maybe under the, uh, the collared shirt. I just want to. The color slightly is off. That slightly off. I, I do see what's going Could on we just, here. That's maybe yeah. just move your hand a little bit. Yeah. Well, welcome to Impulsive. Uh, Johnny, I, I hate to say this, and I think this goes well with the tie. Um, the last time you were actually on Impulsive once before for mm -hmm. what, a half an hour, maybe? Was it the Hannah Stocking episode? Hannah Stocking, he came in at the end. You had, before you came on the show that day, you had, uh, you didn't know you were going to be coming on the show and you had indulged slightly in a little bit of psilocybin mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to talk about this. I just think I and I and I wanted to break the ice with this, but you know, I feel like talking about failure first, and then we get yeah. into that supreme success. Yeah, sure. What do you what do you what, what's what's good with the silly silly? Doing like that. like and also Jones. what do you what do you think about the the path that certain places in America are taking right now towards the legalization of psilocybin? Oh, um I think I think it's great. I think it's going to be um I personally see it as an like an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. Um, I think especially more than ever right now with creative people feeling entrapped because of quarantine mm -hmm. and COVID and staying inside. And I think you're going to see a lot more creative people kind of feeling trapped and feeling, you know, which feeling trapped ultimately leads to anxiety buildup and mm -hmm. depression. And, and I feel, you know, some of these psychedelic drugs, you know, um, actually give you kind of a like an escape, you know, kind of give you some of the, the answers that you didn't have before and they connect you with your subconscious mind. So I think, you know, I mean, of course, there's going to be some people who abuse it, just like people, some people abuse alcohol, some people abuse sugar, marijuana, you know, everything, marijuana, yeah. you know, but 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 I think for um, for the masses, I think it's going to really help, um, you know, connect yourself, connect, connect with yourself more and find some of those answers that you don't know. It's definitely a 
a fast track way to completely switch your perspective on life like that. This isn't a PSA to, to try yeah. psychedelics, but what about the Hannah stocking? Was it that bad that you felt like you needed no, to do no, drugs? No, 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 no. He Why was, did you do drugs? No, no, no. I was just here <laughs> and um, I wasn't, I, I, honestly, I didn't even, you know, like, I just wanted to come by and see you guys. I, I wanted, but you wanted then, to see I, us intoxicated. On. No, stop, stop. Well, you weren't here. He sat down like this. <laughs> Johnny comes on the podcast. He's, I knew something was wrong right off the bat. He comes down and sits down like this. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I owe you a, pr a preface here. I'm not offering any context. So so he's not doing this shit to, to get fucked up. Nothing was wrong. You're he, He's very much joining a high level group of business executives and, and thinkers in this country right now who are utilizing psilocybin microdoses to enhance their collaborative and creative spirit. This is half a decade to a decade behind Silicon Valley who has been using psilocybin and microdose levels for the past five to 10 years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to continue to, to garner collaborative spirit on teams. CEOs are doing it to open their minds to new creative approaches to both business and technology. It seems, and, and LA has as well, but what, I guess the question for me is what core benefits are you finding in your life? And I know you just said, you know, uh, the relief of anxiety and depression, but what do you, what are you finding it does for your approach to business and, and creative? Um, you know, I'm, I'm always a thinker and I'm always thinking of ideas and usually, you know, I think of an idea and then I move on to what's on my plate. So that idea still stays in the back of my head and my subconscious mind. And eventually like it just builds up and builds up, you know, sometimes I'll sit, you know, I'll write down the idea real quick in like my notes app, but you know, it just sits there. And then when it's time to execute, it just kind of connects me back with my subconscious mind on what needs to do. And then now how does that one idea connect with the big picture of what, we're building or with the, you know, how does it become one big experience? How do we take this to another level? And it just really, it just really helps me release, especially I work from home. I'm, you know, I'm, I, my office is not in my home. So I'm home almost always, you know, uh, you know, sometimes I, you know, I'll go out for a dinner, but that's about it. You know, so I'm home and I don't have that, um, mm -hmm. you know, before, before co pre COVID, you know, we had an office and we had a team of people that would sit in a room and our ideas would bounce off one another because, you know, that's how we used to be in the, you know, in a room of like six to eight people coming up with ideas and mm. that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. And I don't know when that's coming back. So, so, you know, now I'm feeling, you know, a little bit separated from that. And now I'm just, you know, just working on different things, but you know, I'm not doing it every day, you know, and you're not doing it in high doses. Like you're not doing it because the lack of people in your house, you're using it to create imaginary people. No, I mean, I, mean, I, th I think them. the last time I was here is the last time I may have even done it. You know, like it's not something I'm doing every day. Now, there are people do it, doing it, you know, well, microdosing and the, and every the, day. And what, let's talk about the dose for a hot second, too. What do you, what are we talking about? A ha half a gram? Oh, um, approximately a gram? Like, what no, do you No, no, mine's like a nibble. Mine's like a oh, tiny. Yeah. Real you tiny. really yeah, might yeah, a tenth, yeah, a tenth yeah, of a gram, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't does know. It, I don't it, even know the numbers. Does your stimulation with psychedelics end there? You, would, would you take it further? LSD? I don't think so. No. Have no. you tried? Have you tried any of that have, other stuff? Yeah, I I'm sure. Yeah, when I was younger. Yeah, but um, I don't think so. I just watched a, uh, a documentary, Orange Sunshine, Sunshine. Yeah. Tim Leary documentary about the uh, the Brotherhood of Eternal Love. Your ranch. Who, who used to own my ranch. <laughs> That's why I watch it. And uh, it's crazy. Uh, LSD, I feel like has a prolonged, a very prolonged effect. Mm -hmm. S the side effects of altering your mind in that way for as long as these uh, these hippies did mm -hmm. was evident. You, you you afraid of the side effects or any of the long term I, effects of? Uh, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I I did LSD. I think when I was fifteen years old, which is over twenty. It? Yeah, I get flashbacks sometimes. Bullshit. Yeah, I get well, flashbacks in, in my spine. sleep. It they say, they say if you okay. crack your spine, you can release a a hint of. Yeah, I get it in my sleep. I don't know, maybe the way I'm sleeping, the angle, but sometimes in my sleep, That's like I just one, get just from one one experience. No, no, no. There's a few. Yeah, but I, I was young, so I don't know. Fifteen. Yeah, I was fifteen. Yeah, That's uh, for young. freshman year. That's young. Did you do it more than seven times? Probably yeah. around that. There's that's that old. A lot of there's time. that old. Why, why? I don't even know if it's actually a clinical diagnosis, but there's yeah. that old. Di is it really? If you've used, if you've used acid more than seven times, you're clinically insane. Is that what it is? <laughs> There's Come a lot on. of insane people in this room right now and in yeah. the city. It might be at exactly seven. <laughs> yeah. You try to keep yeah, it right under, yeah. under that level. Yeah. But it's, it's weird though. The, the conversation about psychedelics has very much entered the mainstream. And I think, you know, you have people like Joe Rogan um, and other people that are on his show talking about it all the time. And, and uh, 
it'll be interesting to see where it goes over the next over the next decade because now you've got places like uh, Denver and Oregon. Uh, Oregon, Oregon who have decriminalized and I think are even moving towards rec legalization on on psilocybin so you can go to a store and buy it which is uh, yeah. is wild and it so. starts there usually so it usually starts Oregon Colorado Washington <laughs> State yeah <laughs> they kind of start yeah. with some of the weird shit absolutely yeah you're an ideas man you talk about these ideas that you come up with yes uh, in these meetings I heard uh, Alexis Ohanian say this you know Alexis Ohanian mm-hmm. co-founder Reddit. co-founder of Reddit mm-hmm. Uh, when I was in OU in college, I went to a little seminar. He had a little speaking seminar and he said something that like made, made me think he said ideas are, are worthless or something along those lines. Ideas are useless because an idea is just an idea, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you execute on it. Te- technically I hear what he's saying. Do you believe that? Yeah. You think yeah. ideas are, ideas are nothing but fugazi. Anyone could dust. have ideas, anybody, you know what I mean? You could, anyone go, you know, we could come up, you, you know. You, the four of us could go to dinner tonight and talk five hours of ideas and bounce off one another. But if you don't actually go and get it done, okay. it means nothing. Okay. I, but, but, but to grow a tree, you got to start with the seed. Mm-hmm. The seed isn't useless. But the seed isn't useless. Can I but, say not, you could, you could imagine a, a tree all day, but that imagining the trees is nothing. I think the first step is that mustard seed. It, that's the first step. Do you get what I'm saying? We could, I can imagine a forest. Okay. But okay. You're saying the idea isn't equivalent to a seed. No, well, well, cause you dream all the time. You don't even remember your dreams you know or, I mean? or even have a pocket full of seeds. You know what I mean? You got to put that seed into the ground and start watering it. You know what I mean? Like, or else if you have a pocket full of seeds right now, what, what's going to happen? What if you really you feed a lot of birds full of seeds right now? Feel here's where, here's where I think that statement is, is flawed. I think it, I think it removes the importance of, uh, idea sharing in a group setting. And so for someone like the founder of Reddit, he may be talking about the value of ideas to oneself. An idea to oneself not shared with a greater unit needs to be executed upon or it's worthless. When you get into a group setting, ideas are very valuable because when you deliver a just a concept, just the slimmest idea, glimmer of hope of what something in your mind can be, he picks up and says, but what about this? Then the guy picks up on what he says and says, what about this? And that collaborative snowball effect has birthed so many fucking executed ideas. So I think that that, that uh, uh, statement about ideas being worthless is when they exist, an idea stuck here is mm, worthless. Mm, mm-hmm. When spoken into a group of people, that idea could become the next hundred billion, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. billion dollar company. So I agree. Yeah, seven years later, I, I still can't quite get behind it. I think ideas are so powerful. I think the right idea can seep into a person's mind, the right person, like a venom, like a like a toxin almost, and, and just take over and, and uh, stimulate God knows what. And at one point, I know you had an idea to start Shots. I want to revisit this conversation. Uh, Shots started off as an app. Mm -hmm. You were kind of in the social media space. I saw you coming around 1600 all the time, hanging out with Anwar, Rudy. You'd bring Bieber over from time to time. Mm -hmm. I remember I came. uh, I lived two doors down from you. Two doors down. I remember I I was there once. Bieber was there. Um, Kendall Jenner walked in at one point. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Bro, I'm a kid from Ohio. How did this happen? Why am Mm -hmm. I in a room with these people? And then... Fuck, there's a lot to unpack here, Johnny. Ha, ha. Let's go. It's a good story. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, he just looked I, into his duffel bag. He's like, oh, man. I want to know where to go from here because I do want to talk about shots. But how did you even get in a position to be so tight and connected with those people? You're a cool guy. You could uh, keep the relationship going because of just your charisma and who you are. But how did you get there? Mm-hmm. Um, with which person specifically? Let's start with Bieber because he was the inception right behind yeah. the – okay. So um, his story was great. Um, you know, so the first person that I've ever worked with um, uh, officially was Floyd Mayweather, which I still do. Um, since it's been 10 years now, May of 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, and Floyd, so Floyd and I, have, you know, always, you know, everything. We've done everything together. And then um, he had this jeweler, Ben Baller, that I think yeah. a lot of people know. Yeah. And uh, Ben and Floyd were hanging out, and we were actually filming content around Floyd. <laughs> and Ben was with them, and I got to know Ben kind of like, um, you know, ben, you know, Ben's, um, you know, we just I just established a relationship with Ben, and then a few weeks or a few months later, um, Ben said, "Hey, I'm with Justin Bieber, and I'm telling him all about what you do." And at that time, we were actually. Uh, iPhone game developers. We had about six different iPhone games before Shots app, before Shot Studios. Yep. And um, and he, he's a fan of your games. He actually plays your games. 
And uh, can I introduce you to him? And uh, Justin, I think, just turned 18. And I said, sure. And he connected me with Justin. And then, you know, I lived in Orange County at the time. Justin was living in um, in L.A. And, you know, we're just like, hey, like, he's like, I would, I'd love to meet and talk about all the stuff that you're creating. Yeah. And that's how we started. And then, But how did you develop a working relationship? Like, what what was he lacking that, or what did he not have that you felt like you could contribute? I think my relationship with him is no different than the relationship with you guys. It's like, you know, I think we're, we were just like homies. vibed, you homies. know, homies. But then like, you know, like, like Mike and I talk weekly about ideas. You know what I mean? And I think it's just like, we felt like we were just like creatively in line, just okay. like we all are. You sure. know what I mean? I'm, I'm thinking all my conversations with you guys have always been creative ideas. Hey, I got this idea, yep. you know? Um, and I think it was that, like, I think like we were like on the same creative wavelength. I think you also have a really good grip on the idea of building relationships, not based off of a present day need, but off of the idea that something may come down the mm -hmm. line. So you meet up with Bieber, you spend time with them, you spend time with Ben Baller, you spend time with Floyd, you spend time with the Jenners, whoever, right? Not because there's something that needs to be done today, but six months from now, you may get a phone call saying, I have a $125 million budget for a, a pop singer, a teenage pop singer. You say, whoa, I created a relationship six months ago that is going to make us all a lot of money right now. Mm -hmm. I think you're really good at creating uh, connections that will yield future results. Do you, yeah. do you think that's true? Yeah. Um, when I was younger, uh, someone that was really close with me told me, um, life is not short. Life is long. You know, um, I was in my, I'm 40 years old now and I was in my twenties and he told me life is not short. Life is long. You know, some of the relationships you have now, you might not need now, but you might need in 15 years from now. It's happening now. Uh, somebody that I used to work with in my, when I was 18, I worked with him from 18 to 30. Hadn't talked to him when I turned 30. Uh, we went different ways, um, career wise. And then now something that we're building, I was like, wait, I need this guy. And, yeah. You know, I kind of stayed in touch, but like, I had, yeah. you know, career wise, professionally, I haven't had a relationship in, in 10 years. And now he's like running this side of the business. It's, yeah. um, you know, but that goes back to life is not short. Everything's not going to end tomorrow. You know, you, you know, if there's an opportunity, you don't have to do this now, you know, like life is long, you know, like we're going to, I mean, you said seven years we've known each other, yeah. you know, like that's crazy. And seven you, years. You just started working with Jake. You know, mm -hmm. six years yeah, down the line. Yeah, it's yeah. Cr it's crazy how those relationships and can, and the can, reason can why we reinvigorate reinvigorate. And if you way. ask Jake why John, and he's not going to say, oh, because he knows boxing, he knows social media. He's like, I, I've known him for a long time and I trust him. That's, you know, that's, that's his number one, one reason. Why, one you know what I've heard him tell people. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It's interesting too because not only is life long, but it's unpredictable, and it's it's another thing you probably do a great job at is treating everyone with respect mm -hmm. because. You never know when your cameraman from five years ago is going to be the CEO of Amazon. Yeah. Ten, you know what I'm saying? Calling on you. Well, like, I call you that know? the uh, Escobar mentality. You know, nice. Escobar took care of everyone in the streets. He didn't care about the politicians and all that. You know, I mean, the politicians had to give into Escobar because he was so powerful with the people that he took care of in the streets. You know, yep, like yep. not to like, you know you know, go, you know, uh, um, Compare yeah, to you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mean to like model my life after a, you know, drug Lord, but you know, but just something like I, that's one thing when I watch or read about him, I'm like, you know, and all this is, you know, obviously his motives were different, but like, I appreciated that people in the streets, you know, like he took care of them, you know what I mean? Uh, for different motives, but the fact that they got something, whether his motives were whatever they were, you know what I mean? Like I always appreciated that. It's just a very teachable notion. I think there's a lot of people out there who see, uh, this idea of celebrities coming up and then being very off putting to the, to the work or to, mm -hmm. to this, to that. And it's something I've, I, it's something he's never been like that, but it's something I've always tried to instill in him is take very good care of your people mm -hmm. because not only are they valuable now, but you really have no idea where they might be in the next 10 to 15 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. you know, and how, how drastically different the relationship may look two decades from now. Like yeah. it's just such an interesting. Yeah, you were the dynamic. love side guy. That's right. You know what I mean, now That's you're right. co-host of the number one podcast in the world. His, his right. number is still <laughs> Mike from love sack on my phone. <laughs> Dude, you never check. No, love most that. people in LA. I love that. It keeps most me people grounded. In LA. It keeps me grounded. Mike love sack. Mike love sack. Yep. 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 So I you, still have uh, that connection, by the way. I still talk hey, to them all the time. I check in with the brand team. I check in with Sean all the time. Like yeah. it's, it's just another example. You never know. You gotta keep, you gotta, first of all, remember where you came from. Remember the people that help you get to where you are now and, Continue to stay in contact with him. Yeah, it's a wiener dog. 
who also believes in psilocybin therapy. Hey, we interrupt this program to bring you our sponsor. Uh, if you have a wiener <laughs> like this one and you want it to perform at an optimum level, Blue Chew is for you. Guys, if you're looking to last longer, go a few extra rounds. You want to be confident in bed every single time for sex. Get to BlueChew.com. <laughs> <laughs> BlueChew.com has the first ever chewable that brings your performance uh, in your wiener region to the another level. Uh, check this out. They've got the same ingredients that are in Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. Also, if you could just get a tight on the wiener dog while we do this, I think it'll be a visceral, right? They'll be able to see and make a connection. Since they're chewable, they can work faster. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. My girlfriend's going to kill me for this. And the stuff is cheaper than those other two, so it's a no-brainer. If you like sex, go to bluechew.com. Plus, you don't need to go to the doctor's office or spend time waiting in line at a pharmacy. Online physician consults free. Once approved, your order ships straight to your door in a discreet package. And I got a great deal for you guys. Bluetooth.com. Use the code Logan, the promo code Logan. Just pay $5 shipping and your first order is free. Again, that's Bluetooth.com, promo code Logan. Back to the program. Believe it or not. So look, you fostered these relationships. Mm -hmm. And I remember you were like the guy. You were the, you were the hub of all these up and coming social media stars, the Bieber crew. You, you were the first guy I saw weaving uh, traditional and digital media. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you started this app called Shots. Mm -hmm. Right. Was it built to compete with Instagram? Because the premise of Shots, correct me if I'm wrong, was to post pictures and not show likes. It was the, it was the very first platform that didn't validate your content yeah. with data. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm hmm. So what was, the, what was the premise? Why did you start that? I don't know if it was to compete against Instagram. I think it was for the people who didn't want to deal with that, right? Because this was before Snapchat had stories, which is before Instagram had yep. stories, obviously. Um, and that's what we were. I mean, the Shots app was pretty much Instagram stories. You know, they were, you know, um, or Snapchat stories. There was no, you know, you, you know, if you post a story, I don't know how many people viewed it. I don't know how many people liked it. Yep. You know, if I go to your Instagram profile, I can see how many people follow you, you know, so I could kind of maybe do that math. But we took that part out. That was like, hey, just share your day. Don't worry about it. Um, you, you had the option to keep it after 24 hours. It would disappear after 24 hours. You know, it was that. It was that. It was, you know, pretty much Snapchat stories before. And it was kind of for that person who maybe needed peace of mind, which I don't think back then people needed peace of mind yet mm. from social media. I think now we're starting to see it. And I think that's why you're seeing people use stories more than a timeline mm. or you know, uh, on Instagram, I restrict my comments that only people I follow could comment because I don't really, you know, like need other people's people's opinions, you know, yeah. at, at times. Um, you know, so I think, you know, or, or some people hide their comments. Um, you know, Instagram's obviously now experimenting, removing likes on some accounts. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't know if they're going to move forward with that or not, but I know some people who can't see how many likes they get. So we just wanted to do that more for the person who wanted peace of mind from social media. But I think we we're just a little too early for the time because I don't think the world mentally needed that at that time. Yeah. So I don't I don't want to sound like a dick here, but it, it didn't the concept didn't work. Is it mm -hmm. okay to say that? Yeah, of course. It okay. didn't. Okay. So why? I think I think it was just too early for its time. I think uh when Snapchat put in, you know, at that time, Snapchat was just a texting app that you would send a message and disappear. And then when mm -hmm. Snapchat put in stories, they were so much bigger than us that everyone gravitated towards Snapchat and started using Snapchat because they knew they had more than an audience there. You know, I think at the time we had, I think, 8 million users and Snapchat had 100 yeah. million plus yeah. users. So I think we kind of got, um, you know, I think we were just, you know, when Snapchat put the, you know, put that feature in a kind of you know, put, it took us out. It had to be frustrating. It was frustrating. Um, you know, it was frustrating, but at the time, you know, was so having so much fun, like working with people like Lele and Rudy and Anwar. And, and I saw like, you know, those times we used to have a lot of conversations with a really deep partnership with Twitter. Like if you look up Twitter shots app, there's some like news that came out about it. And, uh, and what happened during those times, which I, you know, I don't, I've never talked about publicly, but I will now is like, when we had those meetings with Twitter, I, I sent, I noticed that Twitter did not care about Vine and was so focused on Twitter. Every meeting I would have with Twitter and I would bring up Vine, I would bring up you, I would bring up King Batch, I would bring up Layla. And they had purchased Vine? It, yeah, Vine was massive. It, it was I'm talking all, about when Pi, Vine was at its peak, when but, you and, had. But Twitter had already purchased it at this point. Yeah, Twitter purchased Vine before Vine launched. Twitter owned Vine from day one. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. They bought they bought Vine pre-launch. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, Twitter, you're, and you're saying they they it was the ugly stepchild. 
yeah, they just didn't care, okay. you know, and we pit, we were just having meetings after meetings. And then that's when I remember telling Sam, I was like, I don't think they're going to care. They don't care about Vine. I think Vine's going to go downhill. I think it's time to move our following from Vine to, you know, work with Lele and Rudy. And, yeah. and, and at the time we were working with Batch um, and move our following from Vine to these other platforms because this is about to be a sinking ship. Yep. And so we were so focused there. The app wasn't working. We just we already had thrown in the towel and then we built Shot Studios. Um, so at the time, it hurt that the app didn't work. And, you know, we had to explain to investors that, hey, you know, I, I know you thought we we're going to be the next Instagram, but we're actually going to be a talent studio and managing <laughs> influencers. Was taking them off. Like? It was it was you know what? Um, the ones who mattered understood. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's there were a lot of people like, what? No, what do you mean influencer? What do, we, what do you mean you're going to work with Viners? You're supposed to be the, you know, a $10 a billion dollar company. Yeah. Like, I was like, hey, I'm not going to be that. You know, I could either keep trying and we could go to zero or I could also, you know, do this. <laughs> at so, least you're not quibby, dude. That's what I mean. You know what I mean? So so at least we had, we had this other plan that, you know, this was 2015, five years later. It's worked and it's been successful. But I'll, I'll be honest. Um you know, we we, had, we also had an app called Mindy, M-I-N-D-I-E. And if you look it up, Mindy video app, it was TikTok. It was literally musically cloned Mindy app. And we, uh, Mindy uh, musically became TikTok. But we had the original TikTok. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, the few people who know, it's like, hey, you messed up not doing this. I was like, yeah, I don't know. But also, like, you know, sometimes I see, like, Mark Zuckerberg and, Jack Dorsey, like anytime I see them, they're like explaining themselves to Congress and what they're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like every time I turn on C-SPAN, like that's where they are. But I'm hanging out with my beautiful fiance. And right. I was like, I'd rather be here. No, that's really there. That's really, like, I feel like they're always explaining themselves. That's really Congresswoman. Always the Congress. Right? Congresswoman. He always yeah. says that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do they get to enjoy? You know what I mean? Like, no. Are they enjoying no. what they're well, doing? They, Mark Zuckerberg's an alien. I think it was that was proven, 100%. right? That was a proven fact. Uh, he, yeah. It was either that or a lizard person. Uh, no, a li I know a reptilian it, overlord. Yeah. E either the, way, yeah. the trillion dollar uh, bank account comes with a price tag that a lot of people don't know. Yeah. And know I would never, even if I had $20 billion in the bank, I would not want to like I hold up. suit up every day and go to Washington, D.C. and go explain what I'm doing to protect data. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's but hold up. You had a price tag at one point. Is it true that Twitter was going to buy shots for $150 million? Um, You know, the you, you looked that up? Giant, come on. This is the number one podcast in the world. We have someone, not me, who does research and then gives it to me on a piece there, of paper. There was a lot that. of yeah. conversations <laughs> with us uh, us on Twitter, but that's when, you know, it was supposed to be, you know, it never really got to that price point. I think what the media, like, put out there, I don't know how they even came up with that number, but there was conversations of a partnership with us, but it was supposed to be Vine included and everything. Like, there was supposed to be a huge partnership between us and Twitter and Vine. And that's what I'm talking about. Those were the stories that I was going to Twitter all the time and you know, uh, you know, presenting to everybody and all that stuff. and like how this, you know, we could create one huge video platform. Johnny, Johnny, is it true that the CFO of Twitter meant to send a private DM about the acquisition of shots and accidentally tweeted it? He tweeted something by what, accident. Was this it? I, he said, I still think we should buy them. He is on your schedule for December 15th or 16th. We need to sell him. I have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he went like this. He actually he, he accidentally <laughs> tweeted it. He tweeted that, but he never said shot, so I can't confirm he was talking about us. Maybe was, they were talking was, to was he, other were you people. Scheduled? We scheduled. I, I was scheduled via Twitter right, that way. But, but these guys have multiple meetings a, a day. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah I mean, and they ended up buying some other companies at the time too. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you moved into talent. You moved out of platform and into talent. Yeah. And then five years and did a fantastic job with that. Built some of the biggest social media careers. Brought in a shit ton of money through sponsorships, clothing, God knows what. And here you are five minutes late, five years later, maybe feels like five minutes, getting still still getting involved with talents. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the note boys? A, yeah. a, a little bit, right? Yeah, of course. So so over I've watched this happen and been privy to a lot of it. You've built this relationship with Full Send and with Nelk over the past couple months. What do you see as the what what do you see in the Nelk boys and that group and what do you see in their future? Yeah. Um, what, what I see with them now is just a group of guys that I love just being around, you know, like they're, you know, a group of fun Canadian guys having a good time They're you know, it's a little different than what they're creating online. Um, so the first things first is just, I just love being around them and, you know, hanging out with them. And then, you know, some creative ideas come out of us having our meetings and, you know, um, it, 
you know, I think the the thing is, and this last the last time I was on Impulsive is, I think it's important for them and everybody to start building products and brands. You know, yeah, like yeah. The, you know, you, you know, it's no secret, you know, how much money they make off YouTube, right? So they've got to build other products and brands, and they they do a great job with merch, as does Logan and you know other other creators. But you know, I think it's time to like use this platform and start building other things. And it's the, so it's hard though, especially now because it's so oversaturated. Merch. A merch, merch. Is very, yeah. I mean, unless unless you're a Nelk boy mm -hmm. or James Charles, it's hard to move product. Like the days of making fifty million, of grossing fifty million dollars in a year from merch, only few creators can do that still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, you you chose right with the Nelk boys, but when you talk about developing product, are you looking elsewhere? I know. I mean. I don't, I, what, I don't know what I don't know what he wants to talk about today, but you know, there's there's not they speak got closely it. into the mic with your ideas. Because remember, your ideas are nothing. Right? <laughs> what happened to Macklin? Uh, he I took said a, one thing. He took a spiritual the journey. This thing I'm facing this way. I liked you better when you were on shrooms. So I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> Psychedelic. Yeah, I don't know how much he's gonna be able to talk about today on it but yeah. you know everything's pending and usually yeah, i don't like yeah. to talk about pending yeah, stuff do and it. not not because it's like oh you know it's not the right thing to do it's like i also don't want to get people's hopes up you know yeah, it's the worst. you know what i mean like yeah. you know how many messages i get um from the last po uh, podcast the uh, impulsive episode hey, where's your book where's your book you know like uh, already i was like hey we talked about i want you know mike said you want to write a book but it's like <laughs> everyone's like where's your book where's your book so you know the book is in the work still it's going to be a little while but um you know but um you know, I mean, like everything, like, you know, I try not to talk about anything until it's done, ready to go. You know, keep expectations low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Same way. You, the book, you talked about it a little bit on the last, the last episode, but we should probably bring it back for people who may have missed it. You wanted to create a, a book for people to explain the idea that anyone could utilize social media in this day and age to create a revenue stream. Is that, is that mm -hmm. basically the, the gist of the book? Yeah, just building a business on, using YouTube. You know, yeah. I think everyone now more than ever, it, you know, wants to learn how to create a business on YouTube. How do I how do I start? People don't know. People don't even know, like, you know, like how to even create an account and how to sync your Gmail with your YouTube. You know, what I mean, it's like the full playbook. You know, when do I start monetizing? I have a friend of mine, um, uh, L.A. Paparazzi. I think you guys might know Kevin Wong, right? Oh, like, of course. We cr love cr Wong. Crushing yeah. it, you know, crushing yeah. it. And he's like calling me all the time. John, I'm crushing it, you know how do I make money doing this? You know what I mean? Like he just doesn't know. And he's so focused on actually delivering the content and growing his channel. You know what I mean? Like now it's like, okay, well now, okay, good. You figure that part out, which is actually probably the hardest part. Oh yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like go to chapter seven and now, uh, uh, you know, whatever chapter, you know, how to monetize your channel, you know, how to get into the different tiers of advertising, how to not be dependent on AdSense and maybe even having other products. Um, you know what I mean? Like th those, you know, those, the playbook for anyone who has any kind of question, um, what kind of content, you know, what what to make. I want a whole chapter on collaboration. But it, it varies. It varies, and this is the this is the the expertise of the creator or of of the uh, the business builder is like, how does a paparazzi make a product? Mm -hmm. Do you have? Are you working on some, or is he working on something? Or do you know what I'm saying? You have to understand who you are, what you do, and probably most importantly, who's consuming the thing that you're making. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, you know, you, and you also, under, you know, in the case of the paparazzi with what, what, what some of these guys have uh, cracked, like, like Kevin Wong, like no comment is, you know, finding the people who are, you know, the, 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 the tags and the titles that actually make that video um, discoverable, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's a huge thing. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, you know what I mean? So, you know, if you notice these guys learned clickbait overnight, all overnight, of a sudden, like, how yeah. did these guys know that? You know, that's a form clickbait. It's its own formula, oh, yeah. but they've, they've, you know, learned that and he, they know Kevin's that the people, you know, Bryce Hall and some of these other names are like hot topics on YouTube because these guys are searched so much on YouTube, but they don't have the channels, you know what I mean? Or they don't have the content, you know what I mean? To provide. So, you know, and I don't know if Bryce Hall has a YouTube channel. I'm assuming, does, yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. maybe he's not super active, like no, daily vlog. He's, 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 he's more active than he's more active than we are. Okay, but well, Kevin, that even also helps too, because the more active he is, the more you know, people go in this rabbit hole of watching Bryce, Bryce, you know, watch Bryce, and then they're done, and then it, you know, Bryce Hall, you know, eats at catch <laughs> is now recommended next. You know what I mean? And then Kevin gets that view because of all the traffic Bryce is sending. You know what I mean, there's a whole he's, formula. He's to done it. a great. He's done a great job, and it's funny too because Kevin Wong was very much like a A-list uh, paparazzi. I mean, mm -hmm. he he 
and 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 still is, but has shot Drake and Kylie and and everybody under the sun in these private, both private and very public, uh, paparazzi meetups. But now, over the past, I think quarantine was what did this to him. I think quarantine mm-hmm. is what reshaped his model, has very much become the influencer and uh, TikTok um, environment paparazzo, mm-hmm. and and his videos reflect that. And mo- he he posts what. Five to ten videos a day, a lot, right a lot, now. A lot. I would uh, say, you know, I, I think you nailed it. I think COVID, you know, uh, COVID really made. You know, I, I think to myself because people ask like, what's the difference between a Vine star and a TikTok star? And I think COVID <laughs> is the answer yeah. because what happened with COVID, these paparazzi guys, you know, they they you know they made their money, you know, capturing celebrities out in the streets, but celebrities don't go on the streets, right? Like. What's her name? Jennifer Garner, right? Like she can't be a scene out, you know what I mean? Like Why? partying. Well, because she would get backlash because, okay. you know, like, hey, you're in California, Absolutely. COVID's, you know what I mean? What are you doing? Yeah. Where's your mask? You know what I mean? All this, is, all this stuff where the, the TikTok stars don't care. Like Do they're why? going Do out. Why? Do you know why? Because they're young. They're not employed. What do you mean? Jennifer Garner gets employed. She's oh she's, yeah 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 yeah. She has yeah she has a studio that could be right. like hey we right. don't so, you know I mean so these yeah. self employed young stars don't have to answer to fucking anyone it, ever. Agreed. And they're themselves. They're not playing a character. They're not pretending to be someone else on screen. A, a noble art, mm-hmm. but it's just they they have the ability to give less fucks mm-hmm. than the traditional stars. Less, but not all the way no fucks. I mean, a lot of them still depend on brand and deals. A lot, a lot of them still don't give a fuck. And YouTube. I think both I think both of them are right because Johnny brought up a point right off the bat, which is which is their youth. Financial, um, uh, so any kind of breakdown of finances or your, your appearance fees is not always the reason bro, why bro, people, because listen, Jennifer, if you told Jennifer Garner, Yo, you can still make a hundred million next year if you go out during COVID. She still wouldn't do it because she doesn't want that to re- uh, reflect her image. I think it's it's closer to his point, which is social media stars care less about their their image and their mm-hmm. legacy than uh, in, yeah. They don't the care that part. New York Times is talking just, about their parties. Don't. I mean, Jennifer yeah. Garner's a mother. She's got a she's got a a, a whole. <sighs> You know, legacy to leave mm-hmm. behind her. Bryce Hall, may, yeah, but may, maybe not give a shit. He's maybe 20. not someone with the class of Jennifer Garner, but like the youth, I think could partially be attributed to where these people are going. Like they they don't think beforehand. Oh, like if I go to Saddle Ranch, there's probably a good chance that Kevin Wong's gonna shoot me. I think right? they do but, think that. But 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 you and I both know very well. Yeah, the uh, A listers, the ones who are a little older, maybe twenty five to thirty five are still going out in Hollywood. They're going to house parties. Yeah. The, the ones with no phones, the one where uh if you're the person taking a video, you get kicked, kicked out. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's still it's still happening. I just think the youth aspect lends the uh the young internet stars to a level of naivety that gets them in trouble. Yeah, that mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the the old the older uh experienced Maybe traditional stars are a little s- smarter about how they're breaking the wo- the rules. Yeah, per yeah, se. yeah, yeah. But 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 so now what's happening is so the paparazzi need to capture somebody, right? Because they're not, you know, like these young guys are going out and they have that YouTube clout, right? Like they're hot, you know, if, yeah. you know, bri- you know, upload a video of Bryce Hall or Noah Beck or Addison Ray or even you. Like I saw a uh, random video just came up suggested to me. Um, catch, I was yeah, like, yeah, it had like yeah. at the time it had three hundred thousand views and it was like a paparazzi page I've never heard of. You know what I mean? Like what? these, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just the, from the other night. Um, I could oh. tell you didn't. You you were waiting for your car. Oh, but so, okay. <laughs> so okay, ago, I want to ask about this. I want to ask about this. Yeah. I find paparazzi to be incredibly invasive. Mm-hmm. I always have, but at first it was like cool, right? Oh, I'm getting paparazzi. Like I'm I'm popular. I'm important. I feel good. Now I'm like, hey, I had to. Bro, at the Grove the other day, I'm waiting in line uh, to get shoes from Nike, and this girl starts, TMZ comes up and just sticks his camera in our face and just starts asking some, like, just weird shit about, like, a farting fetish or something. And I, I, I was like, hey, while this is incredibly stimulating, I'd love to just, like, stand here and, and, and get my shoes and go home, like, in peace. She was nice. She mm-hmm. left. But I am fascinated by the, uh, I don't know if it's inability, but... Paparazzi really doesn't give a fuck about about you, no, no, you, know, about no, they, you or your space yeah, or yeah. so. I'm, so is it a conflict of interest? Because I know Bieber's had a lot of <laughs> run-ins with bro, paparazzi. Bro. He, he tells them off all the time. He has yeah. conversations. What are you doing, man? Why this job isn't for you? I can't believe you're doing this. I can't tell you how many hours <laughs> I have watched Justin Bieber go. Okay, okay, hey, 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 hey. talk to me. 
and you just sit there and talk. And then there's some times where he'll leave them and he'll just close the door. And like I die. No, He's it's so it, funny when it, it comes get, to that shit. It gets old. It gets yeah, old. Yeah. So it, you're a master at forming these relationships, but is there ever a conflict of interest? In what? With with the paparazzi? Mm, I don't. I don't want to put words in Bieber's mouth, but you know, sometimes the paparazzi makes him feel uncomfortable and you're good friends with one of those people. Yeah. Is that a conflict of interest? Oh, um, oh, you mean with Kevin Wong? Yeah. Oh, well. Like is Bieber ever like, Hey, what, Johnny, like what the, this guy no, t- well, from time and time again is sitting outside a restaurant. I just took my Kev, wife on a date. Yeah. Well, Kevin's not one of those guys. Okay. You know, Kevin is okay. like the nice yeah, guy. Yeah, like, you I, know, I actually don't know him. I think, uh, yeah, Kevin, um, I, he, I remember he came one up to a Southern night. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go. I remember, uh, Jake was at Boa once. Um, Jake was at Boa once and um and and I guess Kevin tried to interview him and Jake didn't want to deal with it. So Jake walked right past them and kind of gave him an attitude, but they didn't really know him that much and just didn't want to deal with it, oh, right? Okay. Just like you don't want to deal with it, Justin wants so, to deal sometimes, with it. Sometimes, sometimes, right? Yeah. It's all circumstantial. But 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 Kevin texts me, he's like, Hey, just a heads up, next time you tell Jake, tell him I apologize. Oh, you know, okay. I could tell he was okay, having a bad day. Like that's the he's kind of great. guy he is. Now, some of these other guys, you know, maybe these newer ones are the ones who are just really thirsty. Yeah, they get in your face, you know, and they or they ask dumb questions. You know what I mean? Like I've seen some paparazzi guys ask some questions. You know, some sometimes like 15, 16 year old TikTokers. I'm like, whoa, what like, the, yeah, yeah they, do, they, they do, do yeah, they do, yeah, like a I don't versus, want to know about this next video, please. But here, but here's my here's the way I've always looked at it, <laughs> and not to com- not to compare the two, not to compare them, you know, perfectly. But the garbage man, when he comes to pick up the garbage, sometimes comes at seven thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. The can smashed on the loud. ground, it's so loud. I don't want to hear that shit. No. I'm sleeping. But guess what? It's a necessary service. Have to do it, and people and and people are making money off doing that service, Capital. and so and right, and so thanks for the athletes. <laughs> and so when you look at paparazzi, there is there there are consumers to that content, and there is a whole industry behind mm-hmm. it. And so well, me and him may not like it. it, the industry exists, right? And so I think it, I think it comes down to people like Kevin who understand that there is a boundary that exists and to respect it. The, yeah. Obviously we remember me and you remember the story of princess die and mm-hmm. we've seen how far paparazzi's overreaction can, can lead. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot has changed in that space. I want to, I want to tie it back just a little bit to business building because this is what we were talking about earlier. How do you help someone like Kevin Wong? And I know you're not working with him from, from a business perspective, uh, create a product because the way that the mm. way that I've always looked at uh, real influence in this world and especially building a brand around your influence is if you can't make someone feel something, you don't have shit. Mm-hmm. That has always been my belief on it. So if you can't make someone feel something viscerally inside them from it, witnessing your your content, whether it's inspiration, uh, disgust, whatever it is, some sort of visceral reaction or bond to your content it's very hard to then sell a product to them. So how would you instruct someone out there who doesn't make content that shows a personality or creates that bond to sell a product? Yeah, it it depends. And that's a great question. You know, I I don't think everyone has an answer. Like if I had an answer for every YouTuber, what product they should sell, like, you know what I mean? Like you'd be the billion dollar man. You know what I mean? But like, I think it just hits you sometimes, you know what I mean? It just randomly hits you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes it's simple. Like sometimes, okay, Dr. Dre, you're a producer. You have an ear for music. You should have headphones. There's no one who owns a headphone space yet. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, let's do it. You know what yeah. I mean? No, sometimes it's a no-brainer. You know what I mean? But sometimes it's like, you know what I mean? Sometimes it just hits you. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? The, the flavored sugar water, that 50 cent, so, you know, they would vitamin water. You know what I mean? Sometimes some, something random. I don't know what the answer is for, say, Kevin Wong specifically, but I think something will hit him one day. You know, don't... Could be anything. Could be, I don't know. You know what I mean? You know. I wonder who who the first uh, social media star or social media based person will be with the first billion dollar brand. Mm-hmm. You think it could be Full Send? I think it could be Full Send. I think it could be you, one of you guys. I think it could be Lele. I could be thinking it could be James Charles. Dude, Lele. Lele's a machine. Mm-hmm. You've been on the Lele train from damn near day one. Mm-hmm. She became a, she became a, she went from Viner to one of the biggest Latin stars in the world. Mm-hmm. How'd y'all do that? You know, um, 
obviously we've got a great team when it comes to our music with yeah. Interscope, but at the end of the day, Lele is talented. You know so what I mean? I just superstar. can't, you know what I mean? I know he, she was here. She's like, it's 60% Johnny and Sammy, 40% me. Like, no, she's talented. She did nine years of opera. You know what I mean? Like she had music in her. Yeah. She didn't just <laughs> yeah. wake up one day and be like, I want to do music. You know what I mean? Like she has, you know, she did nine years of opera. She wanted to be a musician. She actually got, you know, uh, her uncle is a, a very, very popular Latin artist, Cheyenne, like like a legend in the Latin community. He wow. made a video for her last song and like blew up in the Latin world. So like she knows her family's music. She's had music. You know, what I mean, it's just she got sidetracked a little bit with Vine, you know, when she signed up for Vine and blew mm. up, you know, um, when she was 16 years old or so. But Layla is just talented. She's just, you know. Now that's, she's got a podcast, multifaceted. Mm -hmm, she, mm -hmm. She's funny. No, she she's it. funny. She, she she's got anything. real comedy in her. Yeah. She's a comic. Yeah. Like, she's not like, she's got like, you know, she's actually funnier in person sometimes than on video. You know what I mean? Like, so some of the things that come out of her mouth, I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, she's, she's wild. She killed yeah, it when she came comic. on this podcast. Yeah, we, she's, we a, were, yeah, yeah, she's we entertaining. Yeah. Are y'all leaning hard into the Latin market? Um, Because it, it, it looks like, from an outsider's perspective, it, it looks like it. Like, I noticed when she really started to, to dive into that market, she went from you know the twenty million followers on yeah. Instagram to all, all of a sudden, four, what forty five ish? Yeah. No, she's not at forty five million. Yeah, I think she is. Good it's, 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 Lord, it's insane. Dude. She's probably the probably one of the most followed, uh, if not the most followed, social media social media stars. based yeah. star on the planet. I think so. Yeah. Um, is it because of that international reach that that helped when she because she also hosted um, the number one um, TV show in Mexico. Uh, a couple years ago, La Voz, which is the voice Mexico. It's, um, and she was the host. And this is like, I think it was like, I forgot the numbers, but like something like 12 or 15 million viewers every Good Monday Lord. watch the show. And she was the main host of this show. Wow. So, um, oh my, that's the only picture. It's, 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 a, it's a glow up. 8.3 million. Look at the views. next one though. The global Spotify chart. Wait, oh my God. All right, wait, this one? No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh yeah, this one? No, I think, yeah, yeah, there yeah right there. She has the number 23 song on the global Spotify. Yeah, chart. that song wow. continues to rise. Yeah. She showed me it before it was released. She, yeah, she, yeah, took, she wanted to play she, it here. Bro, she took me aside and hide four years ago, hammered, so drunk. Mm -hmm. And she goes, Logan, I got to tell you something. When we're in the back corner, just me and Lele. And I was like, all right, look, what is it? I didn't know what to expect. It was such a, such a weird timing to get deep, you know? Mm hmm. She goes, I want to be a big musician star, a mu musician. I want to be an artist and, and make music. I said, that's like, we were just making vines at the time, right? In comedy mm -hmm. sketches. And she goes, and I want to show you my song. And she sh showed me one of her first songs. So and I was so. stunned yeah. at how good she was. It's so cool to see her be fruitful with that talent. Because we know you and, I, you and I, bro, we know so many people. Yeah. Everyone in LA, everyone's fucking talented here. Yeah. But being able to use that, utilize it, and pivot in a way where you can have the number twenty three global song in the world, just seeing her come up, man. Whatever you guys did uh, behind the scenes, yeah, mad admirable. One other thing too with her, and um, what one thing that's helped is obviously it starts. I think it starts with number one with their talent. Two is the team that's built around there. But the third is. Um, the Latin audience loves her. Mm -hmm. Like, there's not a single hate that comes from like Mexico, Colombia, right, Argentina, right, right, right. Spain. Like, they like. I've been to like uh, Latin events with their like Latin Grammys and uh, Latin billboards. And like, when she walks the red carpet, like everyone is like, "Oh, Lele Pond!" Like, like they yep. just. I think they love that 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 craziness humor. Mm. You know what I mean? Some people in 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 the general market in the U.S. might be like, oh, she's not funny. She's, you know, some some people, you know what I mean? Like most people love her, but some people just might be like, I don't get this comedy because it's so Latin that like the Latin world loves her. And, the, you know, I mean, that's a huge audience. Massive. I, mean, you know, there, I mean, there's a billion people from uh, Latinos from Canada down to Chile, you know, in North and right, South, right. North, Central and South America, it's billion. Yeah. Like that's, uh, you know, the population of China is the population of Latinos when you, you know, add up the Americas together, you know what I mean? And th they adore her and that's, if that's her audience. If you're making domestic content in the United States right now and you come from a, a Latin culture or any, any, any culture outside of America and you are not playing into that culture in a heavy way from a marketing standpoint, you're making a massive fucking mistake mm -hmm. because I, those, because those audiences are so rabid and so, um, 
uh, supportive of the idea of someone from their their country making it here domestically in America. Mm -hmm. That idea of making it in America continues to be such a, a, a globally dreamed upon and rooted for thing. And so to see her do that has been great, but I see, I see other artists who do not do a good enough job of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that also helps her too, right? Like when she's successful in America and she's like coming on impulsive and you know, you guys mess with her, you know what I mean? It's like, Oh wow. Like that's, you know what I mean? Someone in Mexico or someone in, you know, and Peru is like, Whoa, you know, so there's a, there's a impulsive fan down there and Absolutely. sees Lele and it's like, wow, Lele made it, you know what I mean? Impulsive, <laughs> you know, fucks with her. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's so. That's the final step, man. Yeah. That's, but, the, <laughs> that's how you know. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you made it. You come on this shit. Ryan Garcia did it. Guess what? Next fight, first round knockout. Next fight, first round knockout. This show, this show makes birth stars. I'll go ahead and take all the credit for later. <laughs> Are you leaning into Anwar in the Middle East? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that, I mean, that's, that's just what Anwar, you know, that that's what Anwar wants. That's his culture. You know what I mean? He's, yep. he's, um, he's Palestinian and, you know, he's, um, you know, when he goes out to, uh, he went to Palestine last year, summer and same thing. Like Insanity, there was a mob, right? yep. mob of people, yep. you know, it was very similar when you went to Dubai, remember how crazy that was? Like, that's what happens with Anwar. Imagine Anwar, you know, one of theirs, you know, I, I got there. asked a lot when I was in Dubai, oh, do you know Anwar? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went to Dubai a week after you did, and it was like, yeah, Crazy. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Anwar, you know, makes sense there, and um, you know, um, you know, and, and that, that's someone else that's just pure comedy. You know, what I mean, yeah. like Anwar he's needs so, a stand up. So like, we need a great stand up. Oh, he's hilarious. Get him in while you do it too, man. So if you're gonna do like stand up classes, please, please get George involved. My, <laughs> yeah, we wanted this to be. Uh, we want it to be big. Um, but. Um, I'm getting well, a lot of shots from you today, buddy. I always know. You know, George is like. <laughs> now I understand your your brand shots. I get it. Oh, wow. I understand wow. it. I love George so we much. Talked, we talked uh, for a second about uh, a very comedic person that's in your life, Sammy Shahidi. Mm. What has it been like building a, a, a powerhouse of a brand, a studio with your brother? Yeah. Let me tell you, the difference between me and Sam is going back to our earlier conversations. I am the ideas guy. I'm the guy who's just going to sit and twirl my thumbs. But, oh, all right. Great. Yep. Yes, that works. That's a great idea. Yep. And then then I call Sam and Sam just makes it happen. You yep. know what I mean? Oh. Like, you know, or tells me like, hey, actually, I don't think it's a good idea because this and that. Or, you know, oh, by the way, you know, you know, someone's already doing that. Like your idea is actually not an idea. It's already been done. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. You know what I mean? Like That's he's the, the boots on the ground because mm -hmm. I spend a decent amount of time with Sammy. I mm -hmm. see him out a lot. And he's he's a little bit different than you. And you're in a, in a relationship, obviously. And he mm -hmm. is told me he is kind of anti-relationship. I mean, yeah. he, he, he likes the idea of being out there. Like when you leave dinner at catch it's after sitting with Kyle and the rest of the full send team, you go home, you know, to the, to the relationship. He oh, he's can, out with them till 4 a.m. He goes out with Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the boots on the ground. Yeah. And you need that, right? Uh, yeah. Mike, I mean, yeah. Mike's my boots. That, yeah. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, soon. yeah, you know, that's Sam's great for that. Um, you know, it's, that's where we're, we're different. Um, very different there. But, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's always been like that. He's always been, and my, my mom, uh, my mom's dad, um, which we never met. She, uh, uh, he passed away. My mom was five, but he was a, um, we're, we're families Kurdish and he was a general for the Kurdish army, oh, wow. but he would, my mom told, or my grandma used to tell me a story it was her, her husband that he would run the army at nights and then party till 6 a.m. And then get up at 7 a.m. and run the army. You know what I mean? And I was like, wait a minute, that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know how. So these I think do it. it's a genetic thing with Sam. Yeah. You guys do a cartoon right now. We have a we have a we have a children's programming. Um, no, that, not that. One. Wait, really? Oh, we have the puppet show. That is fucking hilarious. Awkward What's puppets. Awkward yeah. Puppets, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's That's puppets. What it with Rudy. Sorry. Yeah, with Rudy. Hilarious. Yeah, it's great. It's. it's it's like our therapy. It's like the things that you can't really say. Say you as know what people, I mean? uh, yeah. but puppets can puppets say, can yeah. say yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Puppets puppet. could get away with everything. Can what? you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe I'll, let me see if I can find some. What do you say? Let's uh, go to YouTube.com/slash awkward puppets. Yeah. You have, you've had conversations. Well, not you, Rudy has had conversations with uh, Floyd Mayweather, Bieber. Mm -hmm. This channel has 1.5 million subscribers. I remember Rudy but was we're first not even trying doing yeah, this on Vine. No, yeah, you guys are barely scratching the surface because yeah. this stuff is. Oh, hey, Haley Steinfeld, this this is crazy. Floyd Mayweather. Go to the doc. I saw no, the doctor. No, it's too, the Mike Tyson. Like, yeah, the doctor one went completely yeah, viral, yeah, but we upload on Instagram first, so the Instagram has all the views. But um, just watch it. 
Am I going to get copyright? No, no, just you should watch that commercial. <laughs> we stand the wide. Money. Stand the wide. I'm here with the uh, world champion boxer. I'm former world champion. What do you mean? Well, the What's last that? fight that I fought, that was a money fight. Last fight? Come on, bro. Last fight for real? Absolutely. That's like the fifth time you said that. Third. Three strikes and you're out. Is this for real? For real, for real. Or am I going to hear in the news tomorrow you're fighting somebody else? Oh, uh, absolutely. Just be real with me. Absolutely not. Because okay, the next okay. fight, they're going to try to get... I chose a bad coach. Go, just go to the, go to the, go to, no, the but, but the, the, go to the doctor visit. Funny. We'll cut it out. We'll cut it out. Uh, well, the, you got to watch the whole thing or you could watch the doctor one or the doctor Mike Tyson. Doctor is hilarious. But the, the, let me tell you, the, the story, the, what makes this Floyd Mayweather one so special is this was his exclusive first interview after he beat Conor McGregor. Like before Kimmel oh. or Fallon or anything, this was the first interview he did after, it was just a couple of days after the McGregor fight. Sorry about that. All right. So you started with with star power and then you moved to a place now where it's just creative genius because this stuff is hilarious. You, yeah. Sir. Hello, doctor. You here for your annual checkup? Yes. Good, good. Before we get started, how's everything been? Eh, you know, still married, so pretty shitty. <laughs> oh, you know what they say. Secret to a happy marriage remains a secret. Oh, huh. that, um, that, that doesn't help me at all. Do you smoke? No. You sure? No. <laughs> You're not sure? I mean, I occasionally have like, a cigarette or or like a joint or crack. It's a yes or no question, Diego. Okay, yes. Do you drink? No. Are you sure? I, I mean, like at, like casually, like at a party or a wedding or something like that. No. Or at like my house alone every night. What do you drink? Just like a glass of wine at dinner. Okay, that's healthy. And then a shot of tequila. Okay. And then another shot. Um. And then a few more. And then some more. And then I usually pass out. Then I wake up and I take a few more. Bro, something about watching this puppet talk about his alcoholism is very soothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, yeah, you guys are onto something. It's great. I think I. It, well, so what do you do? What do you do with this? Just keep making. Uh, you develop it into some sort of long form show. We, we've we've talked about that idea before COVID. We were actually working on a short film movie. Um, we had Rudy. Um, you know, uh, wrote a lot of the script yep. and, you know, it, it was supposed to, you know, but obviously because of production reasons, it had to be on hold. But now we're just making these short videos. And I mean, this format is great because it's perfect for the Internet. Yeah, it doesn't make the craziest amount of money, but it's more fun. And, you know, I mean, and we're just building the brand and, you know, eventually maybe it becomes a, uh, you know, Family Guy, South Park, Simpsons type so, of thing. The, I mean, the videos are getting more views than some some vloggers vlogs like they get mm -hmm. one, like plus one million views. Are you are you in a. You and your brother, like yin and yang, would you say? It sounds like there's a good balance between you two. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that forms a good, solid team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we are. You know, I mean, obviously you butt heads a lot, too, because yeah. you're brothers. So yeah. you're allowed to, like, call each other certain things or, you know, like, tell someone, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to be politically correct. If someone has a shitty idea, you tell them to, you know what I mean? You don't have to, like, you know, beat around the bush. You yeah. just say, yo, your idea sucks. You're yeah. an idiot. How'd you even <laughs> think of that? You know what I mean? You're allowed to say that to your brother. Yeah. I do that with my brother a lot, who you mm -hmm. now manage. That's mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. What's that like? You just you it's just great. Took, you took took Jake under your wing, and if I'm not mistaken, the very first day that you officially were managing him, his house got raided by the FBI. Way to go, buddy! <laughs> what the that's, fuck are you doing? That's tricky. It's press. <laughs> that's that's tricky. Yeah, let, let me tell you something though. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask me why Jake. You know, what I mean, like why? What were you thinking? And let me, uh, one thing I could tell you about Jake, and I know you know this, Logan, but I want everyone listening to know this is Jake is um, what people don't know. And I'm going to, I want to share a Mayweather story, you know, that um, reminds me of a lot of the type of person Jake is. Jake, you know, to the world might come off as, you know, the, uh, the internet's villain, but Jake is also the kind of guy that one day, heaven forbid, I have a friend of mine who maybe, you know, I don't, but I'm just showing as an example, if I were to have a friend who was struggling, you know, with an illness. Mm. And if they needed something and I told Jake about it, his first thing would be, how can I help? Yep. You know, that's the kind of person Jake is off the camera. Yep. You know what I mean? Like he wouldn't be, you know, I know so many different people like, dude, I don't want to hear about this. It's so negative. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, but you know what I mean? Like I know some people, but Jake would be like, what do I need to do? Mm. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? He could be in the middle of training, make middle of something, you know what I mean? That's kind of, you know what I mean? That's the kind of person I've known in you and your, and your brother. And, uh, you know, that's the number one reason I was like, all right, Jake wants to work together. He could use some help. I'm in because I know the real Jake Paul. Mm. Um, reminds me of a story, this Floyd Mayweather story that I've never shared publicly. But my first meeting ever with Floyd Mayweather, we were uh, we went to this um, to this diner, and and it went, the deal with me and him wasn't a you know there wasn't an official deal or anything yet. We were just hanging out, figuring out ways to work together, 
And we went to this diner in um, downtown Las Vegas. And um, and they all obviously they knew him. It was like this place he always goes to. I was with him and there was this lady, um, our waitress, and um, he knew her. She knew him. And um, and at the end of our uh, we had a, it wasn't even a dinner. It was like a three or four a.m. But um, at the end of at the end of the meal, he asked her. I forgot her name, but he asked her. He goes, "Hey, um, I just have a question to ask you." And, and this is this lady was a bigger, bigger lady, you know, like um, you know, on the you know, just just o- very overweight. And I asked him, "Hey, um, I have a question. If you had all the money in the world, what uh, what would you do?" And she goes. I would get myself out of credit card debt. And Floyd goes, no, not debt. Like, what would you do to really improve your life? And she got all embarrassed and she goes, um, oh, it's really embarrassing, but um, I would actually get a breast reduction because I'm so large. It's, it makes it hard for me to do any kind of cardio work. And it's, you know, affecting, mm. you know, my working out and I can't work out. And, you know, like, you know, that's why I'm the size that I am. Floyd goes, all right, how much do you think that would cost? She's like, I don't know. She's like, I don't know. He's like, well, what do so you think? Six thousand, seven? So I probably somewhere around there. I never had a chance to look. I'm a, you know, I work, you know, graveyard at a diner, you yeah, know, in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah. We, the dinner was done and he goes into a bag and he takes out a stack of $10,000 cash and puts it under the, 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 the envelope where the bill is and he goes, let's go. And I go, wow, what, Floyd, that is incredible. Like, what, you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. this, you know what? We, we should call the press. We should, we should let people know you did that. He goes, no, you are not to ever do that. No one could ever know that I ever did that. That's for me, you, and her to know. He's like, he's like, you know, people are gonna want to watch me fight because they want to see me lose because they don't like me. That's how I'm gonna make this money. Oh damn! You know, I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> you know, like, all right, so I'll just he sit was, back. He was know? tipping waiters ten thousand dollars off camera before YouTubers ever did it. Mm-hmm. Is there a chance that he did that? Knowing that it would plant the seed for you to tell that story one day here on Paul Simpson. <laughs> no, I, no. in fact, he's I mean, probably going to see this. He fucked up that one rule. He said, don't tell anybody. Yeah, you know? no, well, that was oh, 10 yeah. years ago. It was only 10 and a half years ago. <laughs> so I could tell the story now because I wanted people to kind of understand who these kind of people are when it's not, you know, when they're not in front of the camera. It's you not, know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. so many people don't know these stories. So they just make their assumption. I can't tell you how many people text me. What are you thinking working with Jake mm. Paul? And I'm like, who, who the you know fucking yeah. you to tell yeah. me you know what I mean like you don't know Jake like I know Jake you know what I mean like you're just going off Feb FBI raid and you know parties at houses you know what I mean you don't know the type of person he is off camera it's people believe what they see mm-hmm. and when they only see or are fed a certain narrative sometimes I mean you can't blame them when 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 people tell me yeah oh, like uh, I think Ninja just uh, made a, made a comment I, I think I think we have it here oh lord yeah Ninja made a comment um. Talking about why he chose Twitch over YouTube gaming. He said, YouTuber is such a bad name. I don't want to say bad name. It's just the news. No one ever reports on a YouTuber getting a million live viewers or 500,000 plus live viewers on a stream or raising millions of dollars for charity. When someone like Logan Paul F's up, right? It's YouTuber this, YouTuber this, YouTuber this. And so I have to, my, my instinct right is like, oh, fuck Ninja. Well, but, he didn't but, no, say but, anything about you, bad about you. But he could have used anyone. <laughs> like, like, well, no, but you have the most historic. Is that why? The, fuck up the, in the history just of YouTube. The, it the was significance the, yeah. and severity and weight of my mistake yeah. was the biggest. <laughs> I totally, I totally get it. It was just so long ago, and for someone who's like so far removed from it, my knee jerk reaction, like my ego, steps out of my body, mm-hmm. right, and it's like, hey, but he's right. He's right. My my name has a weight. That is carried by my actions Mm -hmm. because people were only fed a story that I chose to deliver them. So I can't be mad. But what he's saying, but what he's saying in that quote too, is that if someone on YouTube fucks up, it drags the platform. This wasn't about you. He just used you as a, as a horse for his, to carry his story, which is that if someone on YouTube fucks up, it becomes a YouTube thing. It becomes a problem with YouTube as a platform. And he doesn't see, that's not what he's saying. He says, when a YouTuber fucks up, it's YouTube this, YouTube that. Yeah, the stigma of being a YouTuber, it, it, I I would presume he's saying is that a doesn't bit more exist harsh than on that Twitch. of being a, a Twitcher. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They don't call them Twitcher, they call them a, a Twitcher? A streamer, yeah, he's a, Twitcher. a gamer, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, YouTuber just has a nice title that, fit, that fits yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I, I get what he's saying. So so it's tough because you sleep in the bed you make. You sleep in the bed you make. And, and, and Jake can't complain when... when He's only doing certain things that the media decides to 
pick up and narrate and and tell a certain way because I know that Jake that off camera Jake that mm-hmm. we we all talk about it in yep. this room yep. and I do hope that one day both of us will get to a place where people are like oh these are people like these are oh they will very dynamic we'll, complex human beings look who, at Justin Bieber now yeah everyone I, loves I, it's Justin great example you know what I mean yep. like, well, he came out it, with holy and that was <laughs> yeah but but you know what I mean but people you know you know kind of like after a while we're like you know what I mean? Like after so many years, like this guy's a good guy. You know what I mean? Like you had the media were twisting things and overreacting on certain things Justin was doing. But after some time, they're like, this guy's a good guy. Well, Let's leave him alone. Well, that's what it is too. I mean, it, it comes with a track w- record of breaking the, the, the mold that you've set for yourself. Like Lo- Logan, it wasn't just time that fixed his image. It was a great podcast where he had great conversation. It, the, and most no, it's, importantly, it's work. It's work. Most importantly, it was not fucking up. You can't, mm-hmm. no one, no one's going to forgive Jake in the same month period that he had an FBI raid, a COVID par- sponsored party. <laughs> like that's not going to happen. It takes someone like you who comes in, grabs the wheel as the car's driving off the cliff, straightens it out. And then he drives down that street and does good stuff, good stuff, good stuff for three years, five mm-hmm. years. And they say, Jake Paul's reformed. He's like mm-hmm. his brother. He went through the same growth period. Or, they've, or, already, they've already left him alone. Or are yeah, you not trying sure. to go down that route? Because are you trying to take the route of people going to buy the Jake Paul fight to see Jake Paul lose? Problem with and his And his fans will continue to, to be his fans. You know, I think there's a balance between, right? Like, I think there's a there's a balance between, you know, um, you know, no, you know, no one wants to see the, you know, the good, nice guy, family guy walking into, you know, to the uh, to the uh, arena to fight with, you know, you know, a Bible in hand and son and daughter, you know, I mean, husband, you know, I mean, like no one wants to see that person. You know, I mean, we saw that with Pacquiao, right? Like Pacquiao was a great fighter, but he was like a family man. Like he never sold nearly as many fights as, say, like Floyd or some of these other people historically. And he was a great fighter who got beat by Floyd. But, you know, he still was a great fighter. But um, and did numbers. I mean, don't you know, he did a ton of numbers with it. Not without nearly. Floyd. Not but do nearly. You, do you see value in. Uh, someone who drives 500 million people to watch a fight. Oh, sorry, yeah. 50 million people to watch a fight, but is delivering a message about Christianity and family values versus 100 million to watch a fight who's delivering a message of, I'm going to fuck everybody tonight when I when I leave this fight. Yeah. Like, I think, how are I think you the morality as a, question is thrown out the window as soon as you talk about the fight game. I mean, bro. It's, really? It's, There's it's, no... It's a fight game, dude. Yeah. It, 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 maybe in an ideal world, sure, the winner of the fight... It, Ends his uh, victory speech with a gospel hymn. Yeah, but fuck that, bro. Like, we want to see but look, look at the n- each other. But look at the numbers Logan did coming off that situation that happened. You know what I mean? Like, look at those numbers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dirty laundry yeah. pays the bills. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you know. Ooh. So yeah. Um, so should we should we prime up another scandal over here? You think or no? I think Jake's good. I no, think I mean on yeah. this side, on, on the Mavericks. On, side, on the Logan we? side, yeah. If he f- wants a fight, you know, maybe. You know, okay. I just say ride the Pokemon wave right now. It's, okay. it's doing good. It's good. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm yeah, a, I don't want to be in trouble. It's back right now, and we're just flying. <laughs> it's been but it, good. <laughs> it's been good to watch to watch Mayweather do it, and he yeah. he's completely re- retired now, right? Like out the game completely. Uh, I mean, ask Logan. What do you mean? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. What do you, What do you mean? Sorry, I didn't take Silas. Yeah, I don't know. Still happens. <laughs> ask manager Jeff. But I, I was always curious, maybe uh, why why you didn't have a partner, mm-hmm. you know? And all of a sudden one day I see you got a girlfriend, a steady girlfriend, a long time girlfriend that turns into a fiance. Mm-hmm. And you're the happiest and most content I've ever seen you in your life. And I'm so envious and, and happy for you as well, because there's a level of patience and I guess just trust in life that you have to have that my person's coming. I just mm-hmm. saw it on The Bachelorette. My per- <laughs> wow. she, the oldest Bachelorette ever. She's 39. She found her person. And you found yours. You just, you 40? Yeah. At 40 years old. Yeah. She's in this room. She's over there. Uh, she's always been so, so kind to me before Where I even she? ever knew you guys were, you guys were involved. But, uh, I mean, how? Wow. Congrats. Thanks. How'd Thanks. you guys meet? We met at her restaurant. She uh, managed the restaurant. Um, uh, and I was Wait, there. Did, did you have a line or something? Because because she probably gets hit on all the time, right? Like a, like every time I, I, I when I was single, of course, mm-hmm. would deliver a line to a, a waitress, like d- a pretty waitress. They hear this all the time. Yeah, it's, I just it's, all, it's all it's all bullshit. Well, she wasn't a waitress. She was the manager. Oh, I know, I know, yeah. I know, I know. She big yeah. baller. Yeah. I'm just yeah. For me, I I, 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 I already talking, know how I it is. I'm talking to the managers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I already know how it is. You're like, yo, let me speak to the manager. How you doing? You do yeah, it? she's that. How'd you do that person? Um, you know, I, I, you know. One day the bus just hit me. 
You know, like I was just there and met her and you got hit by yeah. a bus in front of her? Well, you know, that's that's well, she came to the hospital bed no, and stuff. No, I mean like love, right? Like oh, I got oh. hit by the arrow. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. it just happened. You know, like Wait, it just at happened. first sight type shit? Yes. Bullshit. No. Cap. Cap what? Uh bottle cap. <laughs> What's that mean? No, no one 40. knows at this point. He goes I'm forty. <laughs> so you got you hit by a cupid's I arrow. Heard, I just yeah. love this it first sight. Thing. Were you boo yeah. were you boozing or ripping fungi or no, some shit? No. No, no, no. Yeah, no. You had, just did there. you did you have a line or did you guys fall into? Because I'm t bro, I know she hears this all the time, right? Yeah. She works at a, a a very prominent LA restaurant. Yeah. With successful, good looking men passing through there all the time. So how'd you do it? We just exchanged information, um, and then you know, you know, and we just went on a couple of dates, and then um, can I tell the whole story? No, I can't. No, no, don't story. do it. No, I like to keep private <laughs> she, people's. She was seeing private. somebody at the time. <gasps> oh, you know, Lord, one of those. So I, yeah, and then um, and it's all history, and we're getting married next year. That's congrats, incredible. Congrats. Yeah. Are you trying to wait post COVID? Uh, I don't think we we scheduled everything pre COVID, so I think we're you know. Did you we're have just, to postpone it? We didn't have to postpone it. It's it's in uh, summer of twenty twenty one, so we're lucky then. But we're just hoping. You know, things, you know, we'll see how things go. Hopefully Pfizer comes through. I mean, we're getting, yeah. Even the yeah, CEO right, just yeah. sold $5 million of stock right after his announcement. $5 million? Very strange. Yeah, that's Man. weird. That's Thank weird. Thank you. It's crazy yeah, how that more We have that. dinner tonight. We do. 7.30 p.m. Yes. Next billion dollar idea. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Oh, Maybe. Yes. Cool. Yes. Cool. Yeah, you guys At, have fun. Hold on. Yeah. You know where? Catch. At Catch. It's we the spot. It's LA. A, every time I go, I see you and your bro. Yeah. Every chopping time. I feel like it up, I see chopping it up with different people. NRG oh, gaming. Yeah. 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 NRG yeah, yeah, yeah. gaming. Yeah, Shout those guys out are NRG, awesome. dude. Yes. That's, yeah. that's the magic of Johnny. You just... Uh, yeah, we didn't talk about them you much. You got your fingers in a lot of buckets. Well, yeah, are you that's, involved? That's, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how much is too much? Like, are you are you you're just involved with so many people? Are you doing too much? No, I mean, no, because this is the thing. One is I'm involved with people that I enjoy working with. So nothing feels like a chore. Like I'm actually enjoying, mm. you know what I mean? And everyone's different in their own ways, right? Like that dinner when I was with um, the Energy Fam is like, you know, like I learned so much from these guys. Like it's a whole different world. And these guys are, you know, pretty much only focused on Fortnite and Call of Duty. But this like gaming esports world is just so crazy because it's like not just Fortnite and call of duty you know what i mean like it's so much bigger with all these other you know leagues and organizations and it's just only the beginning when it comes to esports and i'm just like so happy to be a you know a part of it a part of them and then you know just witnessing this like you know this new vertical of life it's crazy right yeah it's crazy Thanks. it's you know, I mean, look, I mean, look at like Mr. Beast, for instance, like his gaming channel. You know, what I mean, nuts. like I think it was I Go was nuts. I had the fastest channel to hit 10 million subscribers and that belittled me. It embarrassed <laughs> me, dwarfed me. Oh, he's past 10 million. I, I didn't even know. I, I had I stopped like. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. He's killing it. The uh, the esports industry. Yeah, maybe, yeah we got to do Maverick Gaming. Ma yeah, who knows? <laughs> Listen, thanks for coming on Impulsive, <laughs> the number one podcast in the world. Of course. Yeah, you're uh, you're my best friend, man. Yes, thank yeah, you. You're my yeah. best friend. I can't wait to see you. I catch it soon. Yes, he's yes. trying to get an invite for tonight. Yeah, for tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I don't <laughs> want. I don't want to be a part of your billion billion. You're dollars. not coming with I us, dude. I don't, care. I don't want a billion he's dollars. Not coming. I don't want money. Money for pussy. I don't even know who's going. I uh, I'm supposed to go with Mike, and he's like, get a table for six. I was like, oh, it's a surprise, man. Yeah, that's some it's ball a surprise. Shit. All right, guys, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take it easy. Bye.